Hello everyone, DM Gashbad here. We have finished up the last Warhammer Fantasy 8th Edition campaign and we are about to start the new one. I'm going to do something a little bit different this time and I'm going to discuss my army and how we're setting this up ahead of the games. So this time we're going to make it a little easier on ourselves. Instead of creating a custom campaign, we are going to use the old Path to Glory rules. Some of you may be familiar with Path to Glory from the current Warhammer 40k or Age of Sigmar. This isn't it. This is the old Path to Glory campaign that was published in White Dwarf about 20 years ago. It was originally published for Warhammer Fantasy 6th edition, but we think it'll work just fine with 8th edition, so that's what we're going to do. In a nutshell, it's a campaign where a bunch of small Chaos Warbands are fighting in the Chaos Waste to gain the attention of the Chaos Gods before they go and invade the Old World and wreck everything. There's a lot of callback to the old Warband creation system from the old Realms of Chaos books. What were those for? Warhammer 3rd edition, maybe? They were cool, but weird. This takes some of the flavor of that, these small bands of somewhat randomly generated troops that can progress, grow, become more mutated, etc. without all the weirdness and randomness of the old books. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to go over the warband that I created and, and then go over my plan for the models that I need to create and some of the models that I already have. So when making a Path to Glory warband, the first thing that you have to do is you get your champion. Your champion is basically an aspiring hero. Hero level stats, he's good. To recruit the rest of your warband, you have 35 favor points. Your champion doesn't cost any points, but if you want, you can spend four favor points and give him a barded chaos steed. I was a little torn on this because I have plenty of hero chaos models already painted, and if I didn't put them on a steed, then I wouldn't have to paint any more of them. But four points for plus two armor save, movement seven, extra strength for attack, I think that's too good to pass up, so I spent the extra points and I put my aspiring Chaos Champion on a, on a Chaos Steed. My guy only starts with a hand weapon and his Chaos Armor, of course, and I get to choose two more pieces of equipment from an equipment chart in the back. His strength is already pretty good at four. I don't think I need a great weapon or a flail or anything like that. Might as well try and keep this guy alive, give him a shield for that one plus armor save. And then the only thing worth having after that is a throwing axe. So I got one little ranged weapon in the whole warband. So that's my guy. Now I have to figure out which Chaos God he's going to worship. Actually, you don't technically need to figure this out at this moment. One of the players in the group found out that you could hold off on choosing your God until before the first game. And that way you can sort of tailor which God you want to follow depending on which followers you rolled up. I think there are some downsides to doing it this way. You may roll up Chaos Furies instead of a demon that you might prefer. It's possible you have to roll on the Chaos Undivided Advancement as opposed to the God-specific one. I'm not really sure. Either way, I decided on Korn. While Korn was never my favorite Chaos God, I looked at the models that I had and I thought the best way to build this warband would be an extension of my old Warhammer quest group. Those guys are the louts of chaos, so drunken, boozy, violent followers of the chaos gods. I always thought of them as leaning towards the corn worshipping. So that's the decision. We're going to do the louts of chaos, path to glory warband, and we're going to follow corn. So the next thing I got to do is roll an advancement for my champion based on his preferred deity. I roll up the blessing of corn. Eh, once per game, I can automatically dispel one spell cast. Some of the players did roll up Chaos Sorcerers, so this might not be so terrible. Still, it's not the most useful thing I could have picked up. Still, that is my champion sorted out, so I've got 31 favor points left to spend. Here's how the rest of this is going to work. There are two charts in the book. Well, actually, there's a ton of charts, but there's two charts that we're talking about right now. There's a chart of regular troops, things like Marauders, Chaos Hounds, and Chaos Warriors. And then there's the chart of the really cool troops, so Ogres, Spawn, Sorcerers, that kind of stuff. To recruit troops, you have to choose one of these tables. It costs one favor point to roll on the regular troop table, and it costs two favor points to roll on the cool troop table. You make the roll, it tells you what troop is available and how many of them. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is take a roll on the cool troop table, table two. The reason for that is I really should make my rolls on table two early while I still have a bunch of points to spend. Some of those guys are kind of pricey and if I leave it for the end I might get something I can't afford and then waste the points that I spent on the roll. 
So anyway, a roll on table two gets me one chosen with an additional hand weapon. Not the most exciting thing on the list, but I do have one of those painted, so I am pretty happy about that. That doesn't cost me that many points, so I'm going to roll on table two again, and this time I get an ogre. I think that ogres are always good in these small games. And of course, now we're using 8th edition rules, so they have the stomp attack, so I think they might be even better. My ogre gets an additional hand weapon as well, which is also great because I have one of those painted too. So that's two pretty cool models down. I'm starting to feel like I need some troops. I've got about 18 favor points left, so I'm going to roll on table 1 for 1 point. That gets me a single chaos warrior with a shield. So I don't really like this choice. First off, I'm planning on painting everything to be in corn colors, and having a guy with a shield and the mark of corn is just not great. You don't get the parry save when you're frenzied. So instead of spending the three points to buy the Chaos Warrior, I'm just gonna eat the points that I've already spent on this roll and just roll again. I could spend one favor point to modify the roll up or down, but I don't really feel that that's necessary. So I roll again, and this time I get a single Warhound. I'm just fine with that. I think it might make a good diverter, if nothing else. I roll again on table one, and finally I get a good block of troops. I get six Marauders with additional hand weapons. I think that that's perfect. Just a bunch of bodies to kind of fill out my warband, and also they're really cheap. They're only one point a pop. So now I'm down to about eight points. I'm really only probably going to get one more good group of troops from this, so I'm going to take another roll on table one, and I get Chaos Warriors with shields, two of them to be exact. So that's a little disappointing. I don't really want to burn a point to re-roll this. I go, I buy the two Chaos Warriors. I think I have an idea how I can incorporate them into my army. That leaves me with one favor point remaining, which I think I can just bank. Looking over the warband, it has 12 models, which puts me kind of in the middle of where the other players have landed. One of them went really elite. I think they have an ogre and a troll. Um, one of them went really numbers heavy. I don't think anyone picked up a lot of cavalry, so we're all going to be about the same speed, and no one went with beastmen. Offhand, I don't remember the other chaos powers. I'm the only corn player, I believe. Right now, there's three other players. I want to say it's two Nurgle and a Zinch. I could be wrong, though. You'll find out eventually. So with that, let's go take a look at the models. And here we are back at the painting table. It's been a while since we've been here. So I have a couple of goals for this project. First and foremost, I want to be able to use this warband to make a larger Warhammer Fantasy army. So everything that I create will ideally fit into 8th edition rules. So let's look over what I have already. Some of you may be familiar with this from Warhammer Quest. So first of all, we have my ogre, my Chaos Ogre. This guy I made decades ago for Mordheim. I got a hired sword for my Orc Warband, from, and their background was they were from the Chaos Wastes. So he's all ready to go. He looks just fine. This is actually a Dragon Ogre body with Blood Bowl Ogre legs and an Ogren head. And I really do kind of like this model. I didn't have brass paint at the time, so I just put a red wash over some of the metal. It looks okay, I guess. But this isn't my conversion idea. This actually came from an old white dwarf. But back then, you could order bits individually from Games Workshop. So I was able to gather up the parts for this. And eventually, they became a whole unit. But that's beside the point. Anyway, here's my Chosen of Chaos. So that is from the first Age of Sigmar starter box. One of the, I forget what you call them, Bloodbound, Blood Warriors, something like that. Anyway, I painted this guy up to become my Chaos Warrior for Warhammer Quest. This is Sir Osis of the Liver, if you remember that guy. Anyway, he got this cool goblet from, geez, I don't know. I got it in a bits uh, bag a long time ago, probably from uh, one of those Blood Angels. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, yeah, he's going to fight with that. He's going to bash people with his cup, and that's going to count as his additional hand weapon. And he'll fit in just fine. 
Uh, the other two guys are Leaf the Leg Biter, my barbarian from Warhammer Quest. This is Leaf the Leg Biter version 1, and this is Leaf the Leg Biter version 2. Even though the Chaos Marauder Sprue comes with options to give all your guys additional hand weapons, you can't actually give them additional hand weapons in the Warhammer Fantasy 8th Edition rules. So these guys are going to look like they could either go with additional hand weapons or with just one hand weapon. But anyway, I've got six of those guys, so there's two... And so, of the eight models that, sorry, of the 12 models that I need for my warband, I've got eight already painted. I have a bunch more of these Chaos Marauders, these plastic Chaos Marauders, so you can see I've already lined up a bunch of those to get the same treatment. There's not much to be said about them. I do have their bases here. One thing I will say is that I am looking forward to Warhammer the Old World, not necessarily because I'm going to play the game, but because I really want square bases to become available again. I'm running kind of low, and I have to keep salvaging bases from other kits in order to make the models that I need. I did find a video a while ago about using round sprue to make bottles from. I think it was from the YouTube channel Carl Makes Stuff. Anyway, it involves taking a candle or a lighter and melting a center section of round sprue and pulling it apart to get that tapered neck and then you cut it in half and you get two bottles. So I'm gonna try that, cut out some of these guys. Um, they got, they're holding these things in order to hold the shields or something like that. So I'm gonna try and cut those out and put bottles in their hands to make them proper louts of chaos. You can also see that I've got my plastic Chaos Hound here. That's going to be my one Chaos Hound. I've never used these Chaos Hounds before. This kit is actually really cool. They've got interchangeable horns, so you can change that up like that. They've got choices for tails. I went with, um, there's the tail there. I'm going to keep some of the more normal options because this is going to be my Booze Hound of Corn. I've got a little barrel here that I picked up either from the Ogre Iron Blaster or the Giant Kit. And I'm going to stick that underneath his neck there to make him like one of those St. Bernards carrying the, the booze for the people trapped on the ski slopes. So that's my idea with him. So then we have the Chaos Warriors. That's going to be fairly straightforward. Got an old Chaos Warrior box. These are not my favorite Chaos Warriors that Games Workshop has ever made, but I've got lots of them that I picked up from different projects, and they'll work out okay. The most important thing about them is that because they are going to be a progression of my pit fighters, instead of normal shields, I'm going to give them these little punchy shields. They've got punch daggers, uh, the pit fighters do, in Warhammer Quest, and so I'm going to use that. I'm going to use this shield, I'm going to turn it sideways, kind of like uh, Captain America in Infinity War, add a little spiky bit to it so they can stab people with their shields. And the plan is to paint them not red, to paint them like black and brass. Uh, this little spiky shield came from this guy, by the way, that was his original hand. So yeah, those are the two Chaos Warriors. And then finally we have the champion himself. And this I picked up at a swap meet at Great Escape Games in Sacramento. Love their swap meets, man. It's like my favorite Warhammer event of the year. And I picked up this Corn Lord on Demonic Steed for a really good price. And that guy will work out perfect. I know it's a Demonic Steed, but I mean the difference between a Chaos Steed and a Demonic Steed are pretty... Pretty minimal, so I'll just put it on a 25 by 50 millimeter base and it should be fine. And he'll look really impressive as the leader of the warband. No one's going to get confused as to who the boss is. He didn't come with a head or a shield, so i got to find a head for him that's going to fit between these two big shoulder pads. That'll be a little bit of a pain. And of course, I should really try and find a place to put a throwing axe on him somewhere. That None of that's going to be that big a deal. Here's the... Man, that's a big model. Here's the horse's head and tail. The shield was a little bit more problematic because for such a big space, I really wanted something that screamed corn. So I actually had to buy a corn shield from the Skull Crusher kit. I didn't want to buy the whole Skull Crusher kit because it was expensive and if I had them, I'd, I'd want the shields. So I just bought this bit from one of those eBay bits retailers. It didn't cost that much and it makes this guy thoroughly cornified. 
So yeah, that's the plan. I will probably check in with you guys once I've got everybody painted so you'll see how the warband looks before their first game. Don't hold your breath on this. The campaign's not going to happen anytime soon, and of course I am a slow painter. As far as the campaign itself goes, there are five scenarios in the book plus a multiplayer scenario. So we're going to do a lot like we do for other campaigns. We're going to have five normal rounds where we each play each player in the group using one of the five scenarios, one scenario for each game day. And then at the end, we'll have one big multiplayer a battle to, and then we'll count up favorite points and see who's won. All right. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave those below. I will see you on the next one.